fact that we got to go back to the first game of the season when the Giants beat the Eagles 27 to 20. The game was not as close as the score. Prior to that, the Eagles had won four in a row. But Merlin Olsen, in talking to the Eagles yesterday, they seemed an awfully confident bunch. What makes them think they can turn it around this time? Tech, they point to the fact that in that first game, they were breaking in a new offense and having trouble with it. Keith Jackson, their great tight end, was not here. But he says he's the best tight end in all of football. But more than anything, it's the way they're playing right now. I think Randall Cunningham may be playing. He is hot. And the Giants have been hot all year. When you were on the field before the game, what feel did you get from the Giant players? Well, we know they've had trouble winning here. They admit this is the toughest match of the year. And frankly, there's bad blood between these teams. Del Key said, if I have to choose between winning here and San Francisco, it's here. Thomas Sanders returning the opening kickoff. Just beyond the 25-yard line. And Randall Cunningham. Red hot. Out the Eagles, and we know what kind of a threat he is to run. In the last eight games, a tremendous edge. Offensive front, Ron Heller, Mike Shad, David Alexander, Ron Soltz, and Reggie Singletary. Keith Jackson, the tight end, in the backfield, it's Anthony Tony, and Keith Byers, the back, Fred Barnett, and Calvin Williams, the rookie wide receiver. First and 10 at the 25. abilities against Lawrence Taylor. John Washington made the stop and already tempers flare with Pepper Johnson of the Giants and Ron Heller. Taking a look at the Giants defensively, their base defense, Eric Dorsey, Eric Howard and John Washington up front. The linebacking core of Johnny Cook, Steve Diossi, Pepper Johnson and Lawrence Taylor. In the secondary, the cornerbacks are Mark Collins and Everson Walls and the safeties are Myron Guyton and Greg Jackson. Second down and six, the ball at the 29. Cunningham has time, and his first pass is caught by Fred Barnett. Barnett looking for first down yardage. Very close and may have it. Pepper Johnson making the stop. Randall Cunningham operating with a new offense this year. Well, he's excited about what he has to do. It seems to me that one of the things that's helped him this year, his mechanics seem to be better. There's Rich Kotite on the sideline, Jim McMahon sending in the plays, but early in the season, Cunningham said he felt like he was being shackled, that they wanted him to stay in that pocket. Kotite and Buddy said no, and he's out now. He's doing what he does best, roaming and running. Two tight ends and Heath Sherman in and running back on third down and one. And a quarterback sneak by Cunningham is good enough for a Philadelphia first down. Bill Parcells, who said this game, as the Eagle Giant games, usually come down to turnover. Turnovers and some very strange plays over the past few years. But this is a highly emotional game. And very often, that kind of emotion brings out big plays and also some big mistakes. Well, you want to apologize for some audio difficulties here in Philadelphia. We are endeavoring to correct it. Philadelphia has a first down on the 36. In motion, Calvin Williams. Anthony Tony gets a good hole off the left side and a fumble on the play, and the Giants have recovered in Philadelphia territory at the 44. And again, tempers flare. So this is not your ordinary game. These teams don't like each other, but in any event, the Giants have recovered a fumble by Anthony Tony. Anthony Tony, number 25, just taking the handoff off the left-hand side, gets away from Washington. It's Pepper Johnson right there, stripping that ball away. The ball rolling free. Tony unable to get his hands on it. Pepper picks it up. Boy, does both of them. Strips the ball, then scoops it. And Parcells was right. Already, we have a turnover in this ballgame. Giants first down. Otis Anderson, the running back. Two tight ends. They're on the 43 of Philadelphia. And Otis Anderson, who needs 62 yards to reach the 10,000 mark. 
Goes up the middle. Phil Simms, he's top rated in the NFL. Has thrown only two interceptions all season. The rest of his offensive group. The offensive front. Eric Moore is the left tackle. William Roberts, Bart Oates, Bob Kratz, and Doug Riesenberg. Mark Bavaro, the tight end. Otis Anderson and Maurice Carthon with Mark Ingram and Stephen Baker, the wide receiver. Second down and four. Play fake. And Sims' pass is dropped by Mark Ingram. He was free behind the defense, covered by the rookie Ben Smith. And that'll bring up third down. The Eagles defensively, their strength is the defensive line, but they're a bit banged up with Reggie White, Mike Golick, Jerome Brown, and Clyde Simmons. Linebackers, they've got good speed there with Seth Joyner, Byron Evans, and Jesse Small. In the secondary, the rookie Ben Smith, Eric Allen, Wes Hopkins is the free safety, and Andre Waters the strong safety. Third down and four. Hampton and Meggett in the giant line. Here comes a blitz. Sims gets rid of it. And the pass, short. Manuel was the intended receiver. When the Eagles see Meggett in there with Hampton, they know they're not going to get they're not going to get blocking in there. So they turn them loose inside with the blitz. Simmons, no one touches him. And Sims has to unload that football before he wants to. So the Eagles defensively deny the Giants an opportunity on the turnover. And Sean Landetta, the leading punter in the NFL, will kick. Anthony Edwards is back deep for the Eagles. Reggie White in the NFL today's said that Phil Simms was going to get hit. He wasn't last week against the Lions, and he was hit there. And we're going to have a five-yard penalty for delay of the game. I don't think the Eagles will take this. They don't want to give Ledetta a little more room here. It is declined for yardage. It's fourth down. Ledetta hoping they get the penalty. It's a little easier for that punter with a little more room to kick that ball out of bounds. They want him to have to pooch it here. for the sideline and the kick goes out of bounds the wind is blowing cross field toward the near sideline and it was kicked out of bounds at about the 12 yard line and a timeout here at veteran stadium spring like temperatures no score between the giants and the eagles dick stockton and merlin olsen back at veteran stadium Temperatures hovering around the 60-degree mark. Phil Sims talking to the offensive coaches, Ron Earhart, upstairs. There's a man that is so valuable to the Eagles, does everything. Plays an H-back position, goes to wide receiver. His flexibility, his ability to block, run, and catch the ball, very important to this Eagle offense. He lines up as a tight end right now. First down on the Eagle 13. Anthony Tony knocked back. He had fumbled, but the Giants could not capitalize. Eric Dorsey and John Washington, the defensive ends, in on that play. You gotta love this kind of day. Beautiful weather, two teams that dislike each other, that play good old fashioned nose to nose, eye to eye football. And these Giants, a traditional defensive team, they just say, hey, we're here, come and get us. Giants take exception to all the big talk by the Eagles this week. But that's their style. The Eagles, second down and nine, swinging out, and there's Byers as a receiver, and he's going to have enough for the first down as he is knocked out of bounds at the 19 by Greg Jackson, the strong safety. Keith Byers, 225 pounds, a 4-5, 40. Woof. Watch him to the right-hand side. This is the flexibility we talked about. Finds the opening right here as Jackson simp or simply late getting over to get him. And Byers showing you those great hands. First down on the 25, Anthony Tony, And a mix-up. Not a smooth hand-up. Handoff and John Washington making the tackle on Tony. 
But there's the real threat on the Philadelphia Eagles. And you talk to most of the Giants, and if you take Cunningham away, the Eagles could be just an average or below average offensive team. There's no team in the NFL that depends more on its success on one man than the Eagles do on Cunningham. His running ability is the extra dimension for this Eagle offense. Second down and nine. Eagles on their 26. On the ground again, and Tony has nowhere to go. Anthony Tony has been bottled up, and now a little extra curricular activity at the end of that play. No flags down, and he was marked down at the 26-yard line by Eric Howard and Johnny Cooks. That'll bring up third down for the Eagles. I'm sure Bill Parcells has instructed his troops carefully. We don't want to get in a fist fight out there. He knows that his team is going to play the percentages today that they're going to put the heat, if they can, on the Eagles. Leonard Marshall is in defensively along with the extra back, Perry Williams. Three receivers lined up to the left. We're going to have our first flag of the game, and it may be a free play. Cunningham throws incomplete. A giant move might have been drawn off by the right side of the Philadelphia line. Eric Howard, the man who jumped off inside, and if he was not drawn, and he was not, it will go against the Giants. A referee today is Red Cashin, veteran referee. Offside, number 74 on the defense, it's still third down. It was Eric Howard, and now, instead of a possible fourth down, it'll be third down and three for the Eagles. Parcell said he did not want to see the Eagles in third and short situations. Much tougher to contain them, and they have more options in third and short by far than they do in third Harper, inside. Third down and three at the 32 out of the shotgun. Cunningham with time completes to Calvin Williams, and he will have the first down. He got to the sticks. Gary Reason's making the stop, and the Eagles keep possession. Lawrence Taylor is not having as good a year this year as he has in the past statistically, but you still better respect him. Ron Heller, 73. Pete Sherman, 23. Inside, Mike Shad. All three of those people with an eye on Lawrence Taylor. That's respect. He had three of his six sacks in the opening game against the Eagles. So they're wary of him. Meanwhile, first down Philadelphia on their 36. Play action and a good one. Cunningham pass is dropped. And he had downfield the running back Keith Byers. And Myron Guyton was with him all the way. The philosophy of the zone defense, be in position, react to that ball, and then nail those receivers as they're catching the ball. Watch the timing on this play. Looking from the end zone, beautiful play action, and that's what gives him the time here. Right down the middle, watch the hit. Just as the ball arrives, there is Guyton with a shoulder right in the receiver's back. There's no way to hang on to that football. Giants with a terrific secondary, interchangeable parts with the cornerbacks and the safety. And now it is second down and 10. And a whistle before the play. They've taken too much time. Cunningham caught by the clock. Delay by the offense, still second down. Now this will play into the Giants' hands because second and third and long, they don't feel that Cunningham can take advantage of his wide receivers. So let's see what kind of a defense the Giants come up with here. Eagles coming into the game, tied for second in the NFL with penalties. Larry McGreal, Gary Reasons, and Perry Williams in. Houston, the most penalized team, if you were asking at home. I was thinking about it. <laughs> you were going to ask, I know. Second and screen. 15, the screen pass tipped away, incomplete. It was deflected by Pepper Johnson. Beautifully anticipated by the linebacker Johnson. And the reason he's able to make that play, he attacked the play. He absolutely attacked. Watch as they allow the alignment inside. There are only two linemen inside for the Giants as they put the linebackers at defensive end. They allow them to go through. But watch Johnson. Just as that ball arrives, he's right there to nail Byers in the back. In fact, the ball hits him in the face. That's, <laughs> that almost took his eye out. 
Giants used two defensive linemen against the run and shoot of the Lions last week. Also used it against the Eagles in the opening game. Cunningham's pass incomplete on third and 15 behind the rookie Fred Barnett and Perry Williams, the extra back, defending. The Giants choose their places for the blitz. It'll be fourth down, and Jeff Eagles coming in to kick for the first time. Going back for the Giants is Dave Meggett, who returned the kick for a touchdown against the Eagles in the opening game. 68 yards. Fine kick by Eagles. Meggett at the 15, and down he goes. Kenny Jackson. Free agent re-signed by Philadelphia with a great coverage downfield. Watch Jackson sprinting. The key to this success is absolutely fantastic hang time. That ball up there forever. No way. He's on top of it. That was a 52-yard kick. To Cunningham. He's talking to him about a couple of situations he faced. This is what we want to do if we get that situation again. Dave Meggett is lining up at the top of your picture. Rodney Hampton is the setback on first down on the 15 for the Giants. On the draw play, Hampton gets past one defender, two, three, and gets a first down with some nifty running before Byron Evans makes the tackle and a gain of 11 for the rookie. The Giants are better in several ways this year. One of the rays is Hampton. Not only an excellent receiver, but has great ability to avoid tacklers. Avoiding one, avoiding two, and finally, it's the fourth tackler. Three different tacklers avoided by that fine running back, Rodney Hampton. First down on the Giant 25. Hampton off the right side, gets a hole, and picks up about five yards, maybe more. Reggie White and Seth Joyner that time on the tackle. The Giants have ridden the strong legs of O.J. Anderson so far in the season. In fact, in the last four weeks, he's averaged 20 carries a game. Bill Parcells said yesterday, I don't expect him to carry the ball that much. And I think if you look at this team, everyone expects to see more and more of Rodney Hampton as we go down into the final months of the season. Second down and three. And the give again to Hampton. Close to first down yardage. Maybe short by a yard. Reggie White and Andre Waters coming in from a safety position to stop Hampton, who comes into the game third in rushing and third in receiving for the Giants. Third down and one. An extra tight ends come in for New York. Howard Cross and Bob Morosco, three tight ends. And O.J. Anderson the back. Play fake on third and one. And the pass is overthrown. Intended for a wide open Howard Cross. And Sims just missed him. That's all. The Eagles believe in responding strength for strength. They put Gray, a fifth defensive lineman, into that situation. The Giants just missed the opportunity there with the off pass. Sean Landetta, whose first kick went 24 yards, will be booting it to Anthony Edwards. The Eagles have had trouble catching punts over the past few weeks. High kick and a fair catch called for by Edwards, and it'll bounce out of bounds. So another kick out of bounds by Sean Landetta, this time at about the 12 or 13 yard line. And with 6.15 remaining, in a scoreless first quarter, the Eagles and the Giants, and we'll be back to the vet in a moment. In the red cap is John Elliott missing his seventh game with a broken bone in his foot. His absence has forced the Giants to scramble in that offensive line, moving a guard more over the tackle. The Eagles have had some of those same problems. First down on the 13, and a play fake. Cunningham to keep fires. He fumbles the ball. Pepper Johnson hit him out of bounds, but the Giants have recovered before the ball went out of bounds. And Drake Jackson, along with Myron Guyton. Guyton was the guy who picked it up. 
Second eagle fumble of the game. Keith Byers has huge hands. He's carrying that ball away from his body, and Pepper stripped through with that hand, and for the second time today, he has popped that ball loose. The Giants have recovered. They've got great field position. Now let's see if they can capitalize on this opportunity. Anthony Tony had fumbled earlier at about the 45. The Giants could not score, but now the Giants have the ball on the Eagle 18. Two tight end offense, two running back, and Phil Sims goes to the sideline. Did the Eagles call a timeout, or are they reviewing the play? I think they're reviewing that last play. Let's look at the sideline to see if there is absolute possession. Now, you must possess the ball before anything touches the sideline. I think so. I think so. I think he had it. Let's go back. Maybe we can look at it again. Byers definitely Follow seemed to have control. Visual, the play stands. First down. And the fumble recovery was made in bounds as well. Buddy Ryan. His record is four and five, personally against Bill Parcells, but the Giants threatening first down. Anderson, the running back, Carson goes in motion. It's Anderson on the handoff, doesn't get much. Jerome Brown, good run defender, is right there. You talked about the offensive line woes of the Eagles, while the Eagle defensive line, a strength of theirs, a bit banged up in their own right. They certainly have had their problems. Mike Pitts, a fine defensive tackle, had been starting in the position to left tackle. Mike Golick is in there for him now, and Jerome Brown, and Golick, number 90, you see him in the middle of your picture there, was used in rotation, kept those two tackles fresh. And not having that good three-man rotation has hurt this defensive line. Giants, number one in the league inside the 20 second and seven sims up the middle caught touchdown giants mark ingram and a penalty marker is down in I the end zone several of them celebration i think illegal celebration i don't think it's going to impact the touchdown at all The Eagles believe in challenging you defensively with man-on-man -man coverage. We have a touchdown. It'll be a five-yard demonstration foul on the kickoff, number 82. But he's shaking his head because their man-to-man -man gets whipped here. I think it's Waters, number 20, trying to match paces with Ingram, streaking to the inside. There goes Ingram. There is Waters right behind him. And Ingram simply outrunning the coverage to make the catch. Talk about a celebration. Sim, Sims had <laughs> quite That's a wiggle right. of his own. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, I don't blame him. Matt Barr with the conversion. He's been perfect this year and remains so. And with 5.22 remaining in the first quarter. Mark Ingram with his fourth touchdown reception of the year. And the Giants capitalize on an eagle fumble. You have to wonder whether the 76ers or the Knicks have any scouts here today. Watch Ingram after the touchdown. A slam dunk like Charles Barkley. He'd have to gain about 200 pounds to be like Barkley, and Mark Ingram might have gotten himself hurt with that slam dunk. They get hurt with the high fives. I, he had better. Parcells will be in his face. Matt Barr kicking off, and Thomas Sanders is the deep man, but it goes to Kenny Jackson, the short man for the Eagles, and Jackson with a fine return brings it out to the 35-yard line. Bobby Abrams making the stop. We're at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia on a spring-like day, and the New York Giants lead the Philadelphia Eagles 7-0, capitalizing on the Eagles' second turnover on the game. Turnovers have been something the Giants have capitalized on all season long. They are a plus 15, third in the NFL. And the other teams are strong winning teams as well there on the list. First down, Eagles on their 34. Byers on the handoff, gets a yard, maybe two. 
Giant defense outstanding against the rush, and for that matter, the Eagles are as well this season. Even though the Eagles have had trouble running the football, you know that they've got to continue to show that they're willing to run the football. If you allow these Giants to know that you're only going to throw the football, they give you an even longer afternoon. And we have yet to see Randall Cunningham performing his running magic, but we're sure we will before it's this day is over. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Second and seven on the 37-yard line. Cunningham looking to run, and there he goes. Lawrence Taylor misses him, and Cunningham gets a first down and winds up in Giant territory. A gain of 15, and Myron Guyton stuck it. You saw a little bit of a wince and a little smile at the same time for Parcells. Watch Cunningham dropping back. He's going to just look upfield, and when he sees things open up, his first look, do I have anyone open? No, but I do have room up front. He's not afraid to run. Is he going to slide? No. Wham! Right straight in. A miss from number 56, Lawrence Taylor. Boy, you don't see that very often. First down on the 49 of the Giants. The Eagles trailing. Cunningham stumbled going back to throw and going deep. And there is Barnett. Touchdown, Eagles! the longest play against the Giants this year a 49 yard touchdown strike to rookie Fred Barnett and it's seven to six Roger Ruzek with the conversion and that ties the score Fred Barnett with his fourth touchdown pass of the year. Two rookies and wide receiver and the Eagles and the Giants are all tied at 7-7. Seven and seven. One of the big differences in this team offensively, the speed that they now have with those young men on the outside. This is a tough pass to throw and Cunningham throws it right over the outstretched body of Everson Walls and into the waiting hands of Barnett. He's got to have time for a deep pattern like this, and his offensive line gives it to him here. No one even close to pressuring Randall on that play. And that's the longest touchdown pass of the year, and Randall Cunningham, now with 20 touchdown passes on the season, went deep to beat the Giants. Two deep zone, and it's 7-7. This is the first time this year the Giant defense has allowed a touchdown. You see Cunningham, he's still celebrating. Do these quarterbacks go to school so they show them how to celebrate, how to be officials, hands up in the air? Randall knows, yeah, he said, hey, I'm gonna go for two or you gotta get two more. Roger Ruzek will be kicking off and deep for the Giants. Dwayne, Dave Meggett, and Rodney Hampton. 7-7, this is a short kick, and it's going to be Hampton at the 18. And he is stopped at the 28 by Roger Vick. Next Saturday, Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa start things off with a college football today at noon Eastern. Then doubleheader action, starting with Texas A&M in Texas. Well, Texas won their first outright Southwest Conference title since 1983, and they're looking forward to number two Miami in the Cotton Bowl. And Auburn and Alabama, that's an important game. Still one slot open in the SEC for a Peach Bowl bid. And then the Heisman Trophy Award at 6.30 Eastern. Well, some tough competition there among some great athletes for that Heisman. Giants ball on the 28th. The pitch to Hampton with Carthon blocking. And he crosses the 30. Play was blown dead. And Byron Evans, the middle linebacker, with help from Britt Hager. Eagles using Britt Hager a lot today and using three defensive backs when the Giants go with two tight ends. 
They love to match people for people. No question about it. Hager will go in there. Whenever they feel like they've got to put some muscle on the field, they'll take one of the corners out, put him in there. Of course, the Giants in those situations will li likely throw the ball more often than they can. Hampton stopped in his tracks on second down by Mike Golick. Jerome Brown. It was Brown, not Golick, who made the stop. And that'll bring up third down. Jerome Brown, one of those irrepressible football players, constantly moving and constantly talking. He also plays some pretty good football. Number 99, middle of your screen. Watch him as he bursts inside. And even though he gets a shot on the back of his legs from Bart Oates, he's the man who made the stop. Third down and five on the Giant 33. Megat flashed the sign to Stephen Baker before the snap. The pass is caught, and a fine catch by Troy Kyles. Out of bounds, and a first down at midfield. And a gain of 17 yards to a new addition to the Giant receiving core in the last several weeks. Kyles has caught a couple of big passes. That one's certainly an excellent one. Working man-to-man -man on Izell Jenkins, he simply outran the coverage. Sims had called an audible against the defense. He's got it all the way to the side with a quick release here. And you see that Kyle's able to get just a couple of steps. And that's enough when you've got an accurate quarterback like Sims throwing. He beat Izell Jenkins, the nickel back, in the first down for the Giants at midfield. Sims under pressure going deep for Stephen Baker. And the pass is incomplete at about the five. Eric Allen. The rookie who rarely gets thrown at, he's that good, defending on the play. He rarely gets any help deep either. And, of course, offensive coordinators, quarterbacks, wide receivers always want to challenge that bump-and-run coverage. Allen has got great speed, good catch-up speed. He's also very physical. You can see him running along with that play. But Baker has had some very, very big plays for the Giants during this season. They start the rookie, Ben Smith. The veteran is Allen, who's still looking for his first interception of the year. Second down and 10. Nine men up. Hampton delays out of the backfield, and the pass is caught by Baker, and that'll be good enough for a giant first down inside the 40, a 12-yard pickup. It was Ben Smith who pushed him out of bounds. There are eight men on the line, and... Set and Evans, number 56, just behind, but Sims just quickly drops and fires that football. They pushed Allen off earlier, and on that play, just ran the quick out on him. Sims said he thought that they should throw an awful lot of those three-step drop passes today. They haven't gotten to him yet in this ball game. They've hit him a few times, though, including that last play. And Sims goes to the sideline. Giant timeout, and right now, let's check in with Greg Gumbel in New York. Greg? All right, Dick, at the Metrodome, the Vikings put up two field goals, and then Herschel Walker kind of pirouettes into the end zone here from two yards out, and the Red Hot Vikings lead the Bears 13-0 first quarter, Dick. Herschel Walker has come alive in recent weeks for the Vikings, and the Bears find themselves in a hole. They're working on Jerome Brown here on the Eagles sideline. Giants and Eagles tied at 7-7 with a minute and eight seconds remaining in the first quarter. Giants using up their first time out here. A few extra pounds on that frame, and it's cost him some of his play in the fourth quarter on hot days. But on a day like today, a little breeze blowing, no sun. You can run all day on a day like today. First down on the Eagles, 38. Play action pass. Sims is going deep. And the pass intended for Ingram is incomplete. Ben Smith defending, and Ingram may have a beef because Smith seemed to have a hand around him. The was ball, the ball catchable? Though? The ball was well underthrown. Bump and run coverage. A standard Eagle philosophy. Well, he misses the bump, which costs him here. Now let's see what he does. Does he turn back toward the ball? Yes. And that's the key. 
if the defender will turn back towards the football, he gets tremendous latitude from the official. Had he run into the receiver, Ingram, without looking back at the ball, I think he might have drawn a flag. Dave Miggett lines up at the bottom of your picture on second down and 10. Sims looking for a receiver. Hampton was the closest receiver. Good penetration by the Eagle defense. And that'll bring up third down with under a minute to play in the first quarter. Giants took the lead, capitalizing on a turnover. Mark Ingram with a 15-yard reception of a Phil Sims pass. And then Fred Barnett caught a 49-yard strike from Randall Cunningham to tie it up. And that's where we are here in the waning seconds of the first quarter. Third down and 10. Four wide receivers lined up for New York. Sims, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Baker and Eric Allen. They can hit two in the defensive secondary for the Eagles, Marlon. Timing is so critical. Eric Allen right there to slap that ball away as it gets into the hands of Stephen Baker. Just watch the end of this play. Good coverage, but it's timing. Look at Eric Allen. Just as that ball arrives, slap right down over the top with that inside arm. That's good technique. He's really improved his technique during this 1990 season. A low snap, Sean Landetta barely gets it away. The Eagles were coming in, and the ball will bounce into the end zone for a touchback. Steve Diossi, the snapper, and rolled it to Landetta. Oh, a missed opportunity there. Great play by Landetta, who's a good athlete by getting that ball up and getting it out of there. Normally, you get a bad snap like that with as many Eagles coming as there were on that play, you're going to have the punt block. Let's see what we can see here. That ball bouncing into Landetta's hands, but he's just able to squeeze that football off. Goes into the end zone, but they saved themselves some real problems there. First down on the 20 for the Eagles, with 43 seconds to go in the first quarter. Anthony Tony picks up four yards, and Eric Howard, the nose tackle, in on the stop for the Giants. Bill Parcells telling us yesterday that usually there's been vocal exchanges between these teams. Not so much in the last two games, but we had a lot of it early on today. Phil Sims said it, too. He said, you know, they, we don't like each other. He said, they, we play highly emotional football against the Eagles. And Parcells has cautioned his troops because he knows that they lose their cool, that they stop playing the kind of football that, that has gotten them an undefeated season. And that is the end of the first quarter here at Veterans Stadium with the score. The New York Giants 7 and the Philadelphia Eagles 7. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Toyota's quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. McDonald's, you know the one. It's McDonald's for food, boats, and fun. And by Tots, the premium choice. And back to Philadelphia's Veterans Stadium. Sell out as usual for this important game. The Giants looking to clinch the NFC East with a victory. Tied with the Eagles after one quarter, 7-7. Dick Stockton along with Merlin Olsen and the Eagles with a banged-up offensive line. Well, the loss earlier in the year of Matt Darwin forced them to move Ron Heller, who was the right tackle, the left tackle. That is not an easy move to make. Second down and six as we start the second quarter. Byers. Good cut up field and a first down for Byers. Mike Shad, the left guard, blocking, and Pepper Johnson, with help from Mark Collins in the secondary, make the stop on Byers. Good blocking up front. Byers not able to make it without that big offensive line. Singletary over there, launching into his man, driving him out. Heath Sherman getting in to get a block. Good block by Alexander on the nose, and Salt, who's playing with an injured ankle. In fact, both guards playing injured today. Chad has a bad uh, shoulder, and Salt with a bad ankle. On 
from the 33-yard line. First down for Randall Cunningham and the Eagles. And the pitch to Heath Sherman. Sherman has been their big ball carrier in recent weeks, went over 100 yards for two consecutive games. Johnny Cooks was the first man to hit him there, did not start today. They wanted Tony in for the blocking against Lawrence Taylor, but we may see more of Heath Sherman now. Well, you certainly can't keep someone out of the lineup who has been as productive as Sherman has, but he'll get him in there. You can believe on that. Sherman gained 113 against the Patriots and 124 the next week against the Redskins. Second down and eight. Cunningham has had time. Trying to get around Lawrence Taylor, and he does, and close to the first down. He had to get to the 42 and a half. You're looking into the eyes of Lawrence Taylor. And Taylor has always had great acceleration. Heath Sherman a little bump there, but Cunningham challenges the speed of Lawrence Taylor. And Cunningham, who may be the best scrambling quarterback of all time, and I don't think that's too hard to defend as a statement, able to elude Lawrence Taylor on that play. Third down and one. He missed the first down marker. Two tight ends, and Tony will have the first down and more. Terrific hard running by Anthony Tony, and Greg Jackson finally stops him. But not before the Eagles get close to midfield. One of the reasons that the Eagles are tough to beat here at the Vet, a loud and very impassioned crowd that is right there to encourage plays like this. And they responded. Boy, I tell you, look at the balance that he's showing there as he fights, actually doing a little dance backwards to get the extra yardage. First down on the Eagle 49. Early second quarter, 7-7 to score. Cunningham pass is nearly intercepted by Jackson. Ball tipped at the line. It looked like it just skipped off someone's shoulder or hand at the line of scrimmage. Randall put some zip on that one. Keith Jackson was the intended receiver. Eric Dorsey might have gotten a hand on him. You see him right there, 77, just stretching up. Just enough of a piece of that ball. You see it wobble as it came out of there. Dorsey will leave the game now as they'll bring two linebackers in at the end positions. LT on the right, Lawrence McGrew on the left. Second down and 10. And off to Heath Sherman, breaks a tackle. And is close to another Philadelphia first down. About a yard short to the 41-yard line. Gary Reasons makes the stop. We have seen Lawrence Taylor miss several tackles today. He missed one on that play. Watch the missed tackle at the end of this play. Taylor coming in. They're double teaming on him. He gets out of the double team and gets across. Watch it right here. Well, I'm not going to call that a missed tackle. That's a great effort to get a hand on the ball carrier. <laughs> not only got to get out of the double team, but then you got to sprint 10 yards to get a piece of the ball carrier. I apologize, Lawrence. That wasn't your call. <laughs> Let's give him a break. Let's give him a break on that. Third down and one. And Sherman will have a first down inside the 40. Pepper Johnson on the stop. The Eagles are driving. But right now, for an update, let's check in with Greg Gumbel in New York. Greg? All right, Dick, Herschel Walker having himself a good day for the Vikings on the receiving end of this 17-yard touchdown pass from Rich Gannon. Herschel's accumulated 112 yards of total offense so far, and the Vikes are up 20 in the second quarter. Dick? Big day for the Vikings. They have come back big. The Eagles are driving here, though, with a first down on the Giants, 38. Danger. He has an open field. What a juke as he gets to the 20 yard line. A gain of 18. Mark Collins made the tackle, and Johnny Cooks could not keep up with Randall Cunningham on this one. Well, this is what Cunningham does best. 
Watch for the great block by Keith Byers on Pepper Johnson. Cunningham goes upfield. Watch him. He'll point. Say, block him. Bam! Right there. Byers just KO'd. Here's the shot. 52. Johnson. Watch that shot by Byers. Extra yardage for Randall Cunningham. He has gained 40 yards on the ground today. The Eagles have already gained more than the Giants give up rushing in a game. And a timeout called for Philadelphia. That crowd loves it. The Eagles scored on Cunningham's touchdown pass. The Giants scored off a turnover, but look at the rushing yardage with the Eagles have already gained 94 yards. That's more than the Giants have given up in a game. And certainly when you can run the ball effectively in that way, take all kinds of heat off your passing game and the extra dimension, Cunningham's ability to run becomes even more dangerous to this Giants defense. He's gained 40 of those 94 yards. First down on the 20 and on a play action fake. Marshall chasing Cunningham who throws the ball away. Very smart play by Randall Cunningham that time. Most quarterbacks, when the pocket begins to break down, they simply either look for a place to unload it, or if they're going to run, they run. Randall Cunningham tells his offensive lineman, look, don't worry about that first guy in. I'll get away from him. It's the second guy I worry about. There aren't many quarterbacks like Randall Cunningham. The 11th play of the drive, upcoming on second and 10. Pitch to Heath Sherman. Good blocking on the left side. And Sherman is down at the 16 by Myron Guyton. Eagles already in field goal range. The score is tied 7-7. Carl Banks, who had the pin taken out of his broken wrist this week, he's looking to get back next week. I talked to him on the bench just before the game. He said, I almost made it back this week, but he really can't pronate that wrist yet. He wants to be back for that game against San Francisco next Monday. Such an important part of this defense, but they have played very well, showing great depth in his absence. Third down and six. Cunningham's pass caught at the nine oh. by Keith Jackson. And that should be enough for a Philadelphia first down. A big third down play by Cunningham to his tight end. Cunningham is a great athlete who has some special skills. He also happens to have a very powerful arm. Watch this, off-balance delivery. Whips the ball right here and puts it in perfectly. You can't throw a pass any better than that. The only man that could catch that ball, the tight end, Keith Jackson, first down. First and goal at the nine. Sherman. Gets inside the five. Pepper Johnson making the tackle. Johnson forced both Philadelphia fumbles in the first quarter. The Giants capitalized on one of them. A tremendous job on that play of setting up Johnny Cook, leaning him to the outside so he could explode back inside. A lot of times, good running backs set up their blocks. Two tight ends with Mickey Schuler joining Keith Jackson. Ooh. Anthony Tony hits the line and gets very little. And that'll bring up third and goal. Once again, number 52, Pepper Johnson having a superlative year for the Giants. All around it has to be considered their best linebacker off his play. Certainly playing with the kind of style that should end him in the Pro Bowl this year. And on that play, a number of Giants showing their physical strength, doing a good job of pushing that offensive line for the Philadelphia Eagles back into the backfield. Jackson and Byers get split. There's the pass. Sherman. And he is down at the one-yard line. Renee Thompson with a big hit, and that's how much the Eagles need for a touchdown. The ball bounced loose as he hit the ground, but he was down from contact, and the ground cannot and will not be allowed to fumble. 
It's fourth down, and the Eagles are going for it. Mike Fox has come in to help the Giant defensive line. takes kind of call from the Eagles and Cunningham goes over the top. Watch the surge here. The Giants able to stymie things but Cunningham's jumping ability and athletic ability prove the difference here. He gets the touchdown. Roger Ruzek trying to give the Eagles a seven point lead. And he does. The Eagles lead for the first time today, 14 to seven over the undefeated Giants. The Eagles trying to pound their way to the playoffs, but first they've got to shuffle off and shut down Jim Kelly and the nine and one Bills. The brawl in Buffalo next Sunday. Randall Cunningham getting a breather. He scored the Eagle touchdown. As we welcome you to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, where the Eagles have taken the lead over the Giants, 14 to 7, 621 remaining in the first half. The Eagles scoring drive, and once again, Randall Cunningham, an 18-yard run as part of that scoring drive that chewed up nearly nine and a half minutes. Roger Ruzek will kick off for Philadelphia. Megan and Hampton back for the Giants. Great kick. Megan. We'll run it out of the end zone. And down he goes, shy of the 15 by Kenny Jackson. What a fine special teams game he's played thus far. How about this one, Merlin? In 600 minutes played, coming into this game, the Giants have trailed for only 41 of them. They have proven to be a great team at holding leads and running out the clock. They have not often been called on to come from behind. We watched them do it in a game that they played against Phoenix, where they won with three seconds on the clock. Parcells doesn't want to wait that long today. First and 10 on the 15. Ooh. Pass was intended for Hampton and nearly picked off a linebacker coming in Seth Joyner very nearly got a piece of it or more <laughs> Seth, Seth Joyner pointed it pointed over at Sims said hey throw me one of those I'll catch the next one well Sims pointed right back he said hey I'll put it for a touchdown over your head Joyner who's probably the most underrated linebacker in the NFL he's an every down player he's like Carl Banks he's on the field for almost every down that the Eagles play Tremendous attack on the running game and good pass cover. Megan will line up wide to the right. He's defended by the rookie Ben Smith, the cornerback. Sims completes it to Rodney Hampton out of the backfield, and he'll get a giant first down up to the 30-yard line. 15-yard pickup with Jesse Small, one of the linebackers. Big edge in time of possession so far for the Eagles. Normally, that's the Giants game plan. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Bill Belichick talking to his troops right there to try and get them pumped, saying, hey, we cannot allow them to sustain with their running game. And that's exactly what they've done here today. There's Jeff Fisher on the sideline. He's the defensive coordinator for these Philadelphia Eagles. First down on the 30. Pass attempt coming up for Sims. Chase from behind, and it's anyone's ball. Ooh. And it goes incomplete. Mark Ingram was the intended receiver. Sims was chased from behind by Reggie White. Jerome Brown cracks the pocket. Sims has no opportunity to step up. Watch it right here. Jerome coming in here, and the pressure from the top on this one. But Jerome has made it impossible for Sims to set up. He's got to go from the other side. 
Ooh, that's a good job of blocking back by William Roberts to keep that from being a hit. Watch the play right here. Tremendous job on Riesenberg. You heard the promise earlier from Reggie White. We will hit Sims today. They did on that play. Second down and 10. And the Eagles Five. are going to be called for encroachment. A free play for the Giants. And they very nearly connected. As Sims' pass to Stephen Baker is a little bit too far. Right side of the Eagle line move. Offside, number 96 on the defense, still second down. Clyde Simmons, so it'll be second and five. Glance over the left-hand side of your screen right there. It'll be Clyde Simmons right there that's going to make the move early. He's allowed to get back, but the ball was snapped before he could move. Watch how close, oh, well, we were going to say watch how close he came to catching this ball. But we've got to get back to the action. We'll have to take our work for it. Second and five. Sims, intended for Megan. Out of bounds, he was covered by Eric Allen. That'll bring up third down. Four wides, if you want to read Bill Parcell's lips. Sims is only four for 14, and that's a far cry from a guy who came in at 66%. Parcells, hey, you're a linebacker, Bill. You're not a receiver, hey? But you see his concern. What are you doing? Throwing it to me. Give it to a guy on the field. Third down and five. Sims' pass is caught by Mark Ingram. And the forward progress will be enough for a giant first down. As we have less than five minutes remaining in the first half, William Frizzell, a nickel back on the tackle. Eagles lead 14 to 7. Giants with a first down on their 42. This time, Megan lines up wide right to the bottom of your picture. And a running play to Hampton. Rodney Hampton picks up about three. Jerome Brown and Seth Joyner that time bring the rookie down. This Philadelphia defense, there's some nice contrasts on the field. This defense is an aggressive, slashing defense up front. They're man-to-man -man in the secondary. They love to come after you. Jerome Brown slicing in on that play, able to get a piece of the back, and then Seth Joyner able to finish him off. If the linemen aren't knocking people around up front, and then the linebackers making the play for Philadelphia, they've got problems. Second down and eight. Pressure on Sims, and the pass is caught by Baker. And a fine play by Eric Allen, preventing Baker from getting more yardage. A gain of 17 yards, and the Giants in Eagle territory. They're coming with the blitz, and on this particular play, it's not bump and run. They're giving him a lot of room. Baker getting tremendous room for Allen, gets him turned around. They were coming with the blitz inside. They did not get to Sims, and Sims knew exactly what to do with that football. Look at how much time they have. Everybody coming. The Giants did a great job of picking it up. And Sims able to get that pass off. First down on the 39. Sims wants the air again, and he finds Carthon in the backfield. Ooh. And Carthon is hit and dropped by Jesse Small at the 32-yard line. And it'll bring up second and short for the Giants. We can hear that one clear up here. This is the best sustained drive that the Giants have put on all day long. And right now, the pressure shifting to the Eagles' defense as they move on, on down toward the Eagles' goal line. Randall Cunningham, a big part of the Eagles' offense thus far, leading 14-7. to seven. Second down and three on the 32. Sims, Navarro with his first catch of the game and a giant first down. To the 25, Andre Waters. Bavaro did 
not catch a pass when these two teams played in the opening game of the season. And our two-minute warning has come upon us, and we'll be back to Veterans Stadium in just a moment. Two-minute warning, and there is Andre Waters on the sideline getting some help. Well, you wonder what you do if you need a little help seeing on the field. You wear contacts, and they do pop out. First and ten for the Giants on the Eagle 25. Sims going for Megan. And the pass wide to the end zone. Megan was covered well by Ben Smith. And that will bring up second down. Well, next week, these Eagles, who are looking sharp against the Giants, Merlin, play a very tough Buffalo Bill team. We were impressed with them when we saw them a couple of weeks ago. Buffalo, I think, the most physical team in the AFC. They're a team that could move into the NFC and play this style of physical football. Buffalo leading Miami by a game in the AFC East. The Eagles talking about the fact they have not yet played a cold-weather game. <laughs> they better take their coats on this one. It all begins with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern. Second down and 10. Sims jumps it around. There were no receivers in the area. And oh, the Eagles wait. are yelling for an intentional grounding call. Oh, Sims. Sims a good actor. No question. He's dumping that football. He's just getting rid of it. Pressure getting close to him. No receivers open. Good coverage on that last play by the Eagles. Look, there's nobody home down the center. This is that philosophy of the Eagles. They're challenging man to man. And look where this ball goes. Nobody within about 15 yards, but he just said, hey, slipped out of my hand, whatever. The officials did not call it. Third down and 10. The Eagles are showing blitz, and here they come. A bad snap, and Sims is down. Wes Hopkins blitzing for Philadelphia. And a loss of 19 yards will knock the Giants out of field goal range. And a delay of game call. Let's see this again. Izell Jenkins right here. The center knows he's got to get him. There's no way. He snaps it too quick. Watch Jenkins just blow by. Nobody there to block him. And Sims left all alone by himself. But they're going to nullify that because a delay of game penalty will nullify this loss. Not a good snap, and the Eagles saying, hey, come on. We did a great job. They had them out of field goal range with that play. So the Giants catch a big break. No play is ruled, and the ball is still sitting on the 30 as the Giants have used their second timeout right here. Giants have one timeout left. Trailing the Eagles 14 to 7. They said they were going to throw more today, but look at that ratio. 71% passes to 29 today running. That's not what they had in mind. I think a few more is what they had in mind, but they have gone to the air repeatedly and without a great deal of success. They're hoping that they convert on this opportunity, but it's going to be tough with third and 15 here to pick up the first down. 12th play of the drive coming up with a minute 50 to go in the half. Sims, pass, and the pass is caught at the five by Dave, Dave Meggett and blown down at the four. Dave Meggett with a great catch and a pickup of 25 yards, and the Giants threatening to tie it up. Meggett, number 30, right here. Stop it right there. Here's Meggett. He'll just go right down into here after the play is moving, finds the open spot, gets away right there from number 33, Frizzell. What a great play, great concentration by Megan. Look at him turn all the way around. Boy, those are such difficult catches, but Megan is a great athlete. Giants had another receiver, Baker right there as well. First and goal at the four, and a play fake. The pass to Bavaro, touchdown Giants. TD reception of the year for Mark Bavaro and the Giants come within one. 
Well, we expected to see this kind of game, and we're getting it. Bavaro, a little fake to the inside. They're blitzing, and he knows that linebacker can't get out to get him. The other man who couldn't get there, Wes Hopkins, from his safety position. Matt Bard. This is the extra point. Whoa. The ball hit the upright and bounced back, and the Eagles maintain a lead of 14 to 13. There's always something strange, it seems, when these teams play each other, and we saw one right there. That mixed conversion by Matt Barr was his first of the year. And the Giants trail the Eagles 14 to 13. Mark Bavaro there caught the touchdown pass on an 85-yard drive. Giants scored first in this game. The Eagles tied it up, went ahead 14 to 7 here in the second quarter before that scoring drive. Now Barr will be kicking off. And back deep for the Eagles, Thomas Sanders, the deep man. Kicked off to the side, and it'll go out of bounds, and the Eagles will start from the 35. Well, how do you figure? You, you convert on a third and 15, and then you miss what is probably the easiest play in football, the extra point. Watch this kick. It just slides to the right and then just kisses off the goalpost right there. You see it off. It was a good snap. Diossi has it right there. Hofstetler gets it on the ground, gets the ball twisted. But Barr just made poor contact with the football. First down on the 35 for the Eagles. Lay it conservatively, and Heath Sherman picks up a couple. Leonard Marshall makes the stop. The Eagles still have two timeouts remaining if they want to use them. Second down and eight. Cunningham passes, intercepted and dropped. Oh, Perry Williams nearly had it. On the nickel defenses, Williams comes in, Walls moves over to safety. They move Jackson up to the nickel linebacker position, and this one goes right into the hands of Perry Williams and out as he hits the ground. Well, even before he hits the ground. A chance for an interception there, but it won't hold. Byers was the intended receiver, and Everson Walls was lurking in the area as well. Third down and eight. Cunningham dumps it off to Heath Sherman. Sherman gets the first down, but the clock is a factor, and the Eagles quickly call a timeout. Greg Jackson on the stop. So Philadelphia will have one timeout left in 24 seconds as we take a break from Veterans Stadium. 24 seconds remaining in the first half. The Eagles lead the Giants 14 to 13. Giants and Eagles each with one timeout left. And the Eagles with a first down on their 48-yard line. Cunningham out of the shotgun. Pepper Johnson in front of him. And the pass is caught. Shy of the first down by Calvin Williams. Mark Collins on the stop. And the clock stops with 16 seconds showing. And uh, did Philadelphia call its last time out? They're going back to the line of scrimmage. An eagle went out of bounds and then came back in, so that pass was incomplete. Williams had gone out and come back in, so it, they lost time off the clock and a down. It's second down and 10. adjust the clock asking them to put five seconds back on the clock no 25 the full 25 now that's on the play clock it's still 16 seconds on the game clock I'll never get that far <laughs> for sure second down and 10 on the 48 yard line yes. 
Eagle still with the one timeout left. Cunningham going deep. Giants are back there, and Perry Williams had a better shot at it than Fred Barnett. Giants doing a good job on those last few plays of shadowing Cunningham. Pepper Johnson lining up as if he were a lineman on several of those plays and then sliding to the outside to make sure that there was someone waiting for Cunningham so he couldn't run unmolested up the field. Bill Belichick telling us that several Giants would have that role in this game. Actually, three different people will be used that way today or can be. Third down. And the pass headed for Barnett. And it's knocked away and time has run out. Perry Williams knocks the ball away. And that is the end of the first half. With the score, the Philadelphia Eagles 14 and the New York Giants 13. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Ford and your local Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Isotoner gloves for men, the perfect gift because they're the perfect fit. And by Coors Light, the one that won't slow you down. The Silver Bullet is the right beer now. And welcome back to Philadelphia and Veteran Stadium sold out for this big clash between the Giants and the Eagles. The Giants undefeated. Coming into this game, looking to clinch the NFC East with a win, trailing Philadelphia 14 to 13. Randall Cunningham with a touchdown pass to Fred Barnett. 49 yards, the biggest play against the Giants this year, run or pass. And he scored from a yard out. Buddy Ryan, his team stumbled early, have come on. And set for the second half kickoff. Roger Ruzek. We'll be kicking to Dave Meggett and Rodney Hampton. Meggett, five yards in the end zone, will down it for a touchback. Penalty marker is down. Meggett's choice, I think, dictated his memory of the last time when he elected to run out of the end zone and was only able to get out to about the 13-yard line. Well, maybe that's why they get down there so quick. <laughs> they get ahead of the football. The Eagles called for offside on the kickoff. Offside, number 34 on the kicking team. Be a five-yard penalty and we'll kick again. Terry Hogue, the veteran safety. So the Giants will have a chance to return one again. Buddy Ryan, who respects the Giants' plays. As you know, they play the same style as the Raiders, the Bears, and the Falcons, the way football should be played. Roberts is not an airhead, but he's getting air pumped into his helmet. That helmet will, there's a bladder in there that will slide around the helmet, cushion the impact. Yeah, look in there. Maybe we can circle that. That's, that's a, a diamond right in the middle of that front tooth. Had it put in earlier in the season. Got one of the brightest smiles you'll see on the field today. They're not smiling right now. They're down. They're used to being ahead in this ball game. But as Leonard Marshall told Leslie Visser, uh, just one half, and we've seen the Giants come from behind in that Cardinal game with dramatic fashion in the final quarter. Well, as he said, we're down one nothing. Mm -hmm. I guess you can only get that in Canada, but that, that's right. They're only one behind and a full half to play. Ruzek will kick again. Back deep once more. Make it in Hampton for the Giants. This is a short kick. And it'll be Megan on the 16. Brings it out to the 31-yard line where Anthony Edwards makes the stop on Dave Meggett. They're working on Lionel Manuel over there. Philadelphia with a solid edge in time of possession. Really able to control the football much more than the Giants would like in that first half. And the reason is they were able to run the football. Look at this. That's something that no one really expected to see. And who's running the football? Hampton doing a good job for the Giants, but Cunningham, 8.2-yard average on his five rushes. 
Two turnovers, both by the Eagles, and the Giants scored on one of those. And the Giants have a first down on the 31. Penalty marker will be against Philadelphia, and the pass is caught by Stephen Baker. And Baker is tackled in Philadelphia territory to the 32. A 36-yard gain, Byron Evans on the stop. The Eagles were offsides, I believe. Seth Joyner jumped offside, and this play is going to stand. Number 59 on the defense. Up penalty is Seth Joyner at the bottom of your screen. Number 59 is the man who's offside, and Sims knows this is a free down. Right here, the move inside to get away from Eric Allen. And number 56, Small, coming from the outside. That's tremendous speed. He may be the fastest linebacker in the NFL, running down Stephen Baker from behind. 36-yard pickup, first down, Giants on the Eagle 33. The pitch to Hampton with Carthon blocking. And not much that time. Clyde Simmons pursuing well for the Eagles. Talking to Phil Sims yesterday, one of the things that Sims talked to me about, he said, after Buddy Ryan came to Philadelphia and installed this very complex defensive package, for several years, we could expect this defense to beat themselves, to make critical errors. Those errors have become less and less frequent on the field. Second down and eight on the 31. Gets by one defender. He got by Byron Evans, but Ben Smith ultimately brings down Hampton. That'll bring up third down and about five for the Giants. Not a good match. Evans trying to control the running back Hampton, who is extremely quick out of that backfield. But you put Megan Hampton in there, you don't have good matchups. That's why they put him in there. The Giants, with so many good offensive tools, Right now, they're sharpening up some of the defensive tools on the sideline. Bill Belichick talking to his defense. Third and three for the Giants. Trailing by one point. An audible called by Sims. And a blitz coming up. Penalty marker down, and the pass is caught by Ingram out of bounds. It'll be a first down, but a flag has been thrown. Sims went into an audible, and the Eagles blitz. And this one will go against the Giants. And they'll take the holding penalty. They'll take the 10 yards. Illegal motion. All of them were not set. That penalty is declined. Holding, number 30 on the offense. That penalty is accepted. It'll be third down. Anytime Megan and Hampton are in there together, the, the Eagles want to blitz. They want to force those two guys to block. Hopkins right there, the man that Megan ends up tackling on that play. And the officials with the flag right behind that. Twice today, Sims has called the audible, and twice the Eagles called a blitz. Big penalty because that would have been a first down. Instead, it'll be third down and 13, back to the 36 of Philadelphia. They picked up a big third and 15 to get down for the last score. Let's see if they can do it here. Sims. And he throws the ball away as the pocket collapsed around him, and that'll bring up fourth down. Sims just holding out his hand, saying, what else could I do on that one? As the pocket disintegrated, he ran out of time. He does not like to run the football, and Bill Parcells has told him, get rid of the football. Even in a situation like this, it's preferable to have him throw it away than take the sack and take a chance of injury. Anthony Edwards is back, and Sean Landetta, who has punted well. And this kick goes into the end zone. Landetta. Almost stopped in there. Would have been a great kick. He had several great kicks against the Rams out on the West Coast. But the Eagles will take over offensively on their 20 when we come back to Veterans Stadium in just a moment. 
The Eagles taking over offensively for the first time in the second half, leading the Giants 14 to 13. Dick Stockton and Merlin Olsen in Veterans Stadium. A big, perhaps grudge battle between two teams. Physical NFC Eastern clash. And the Eagles start from the 20. The pitch to Heath Sherman. Gets to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Steve Diossi on the tackle. Well, this year, there will be three wild card teams, which really opens it up, Merlin. These are the teams, and there may be even more, that still have a good shot of making it. Well, the Eagles, uh, with that loss by Washington, now excited by the fact that if they can get going here, keep this winning drive alive, they can host a wild card game. Minnesota beating the Bears at 4-6. and six. They got a better shot at team. Second down and 10. Cunningham avoiding defenders and the pass is Ooh. incomplete it was tipped Keith Jackson was the intended receiver Cunningham rifled that into a crowd but right into the hands of Jackson Johnny Cooks was out there to stand in front of Cunningham keep him from going upfield ordinarily Cunningham I think would have tried to juke Cooks and get by him because Cooks no match for him in speed Two big drops in last week's game of, against Atlanta by Keith Jackson, which hurt them in that ball game, even though they won in the final second. Leonard Marshall in the game. The Giants with two down linemen in Marshall and Eric Howard. Third down and ten. And I think Cunningham blew that one. Cunningham started back. Got everybody thinking about moving, and then they had people moving at the snap. Fast start. Number 66 on the offense. Still third down. Ron Salt very nearly did not play today. The right guard, as you mentioned, who has been injured with an ankle problem. And when you've got a problem with your legs, you try and get every bit of anticipation that you can. You're trying to force yourself back onto your heels a little quicker on the pass down. I'm sure that's what Salt was thinking about on that play. Third down and 15 for the Eagles. Looking for their fifth win in a row. Never won five straight under Buddy Ryan. Cunningham back from his five and wide open as Keith fires down the sideline. And a big play by the Eagles. Four yards. Fires is on the left side of your screen, number 41. He just circles to the outside and no one covers him. Myron Guyton looked like he was closer than anyone else. There wasn't anyone within 10 yards. A blown assignment. There's Guyton finally coming into the picture, and Byers, who has fumbled today earlier, clamped onto that football and held it. And this becomes the biggest play run against the Giants by any team this year. It's 54 two yards. Two big ones for the Eagles today. Heath Sherman testing the middle of the line. Gets inside the 30. Eric Dorsey on the stop. As the Eagles threaten here with 10 and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. One of the reasons that Keith Byers is such an excellent receiver, he has huge hands. I went into the locker room, shook hands with him. His hands are as big as mine, and I have very big hands but it allows him to control that football very comfortably. That was the longest pass play by the Eagles all year to Byers. Second down and seven. Cunningham off the back foot. Throws it out of bounds. Calvin Williams was covered on the play by Mark Collins. Cunningham with time to throw, and again, they have to pay special attention to Lawrence Taylor. Even though Taylor has not been able to do a lot of the things he normally does in a game today. Let's see what they're doing on it. Number 73, Heller, the man initially responsible. You treat him as the defensive end. And then Tony put into the lineup specifically because he blocks well on Taylor there to help on the outside. Third down and seven on the 29-yard line. Cunningham up the middle to Calvin Williams short of the first down. 
Gary Reasons covering on the play. So the rookie cut too soon, and that'll bring up fourth down, and the Eagles will go for three. A rookie mistake there. Cunningham, had he known exactly where he was on the field, could have turned up and I think made that yardage instead of trying to get big yardage coming across. But he has played like a veteran this year. Cunningham said right from the start he's played like a veteran player, not a rookie wide receiver. A 39-yard attempt by Roger Ruzek. And the kick is good. A line drive field goal by Roger Ruzek. And the Eagles now lead it 17 to 13. Here at Philadelphia, Dick Stockton and Merlin Olsen, the Eagles with Roger Ruzek connecting on a 39-yard field goal, now lead by four points over the Giants. Ruzek was not happy with himself on that kick. He did line drive it, shaking his head, but it went through. It counts. Well, it counts. Ask Matt That's Barr, it. who missed an extra point. You better believe it. Megan and Hampton are deep for the Giants. Ruzek with another short kick. Yeah, very short. Rodney Hampton. And he is tackled by a host of Eagles led by Britt Hager. I want to remind you that next Saturday, college football today begins at noon Eastern with Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa. Then doubleheader action. Texas A&M takes on Texas, a traditional rivalry. By the way, A&M is 8-2-1. Texas is heading for the Cotton Bowl. Auburn against Alabama. And then the 64th Heisman Trophy show. We're going to tell you some of the hot candidates after this play. First down. And the give to Hampton. Gets by one defender and picks up close to nine yards with Wes Hopkins on the stop. Eric Bieniemy of Colorado, Rocket Ismail of Notre Dame, and Ty Detmer of BYU, the hopeful. Well, Ismail had 189 yards all-purpose last night, but I'll tell you, I was going to vote for Detmer until he threw five touchdown passes against my alma mater, Utah State, yesterday. Hey, embarrass him like that. He doesn't get my vote anymore. No way. Cross his name off, right, Merlin? That's it. He's, he's <laughs> out. He's out. Get him out. He may win. Second down and one, and the pitch to Hampton. Big play. And shy of the first down. Don't think he made it. Jerome Brown on a big play. But right now, let's have an NFL Today report from Greg Gumbel in New York. Greg? Well, Dick, it's just one of those days for the Chicago Bears. Watch Neil Anderson have the ball just taken right away from him by number 57, Mike Merriweather. And he scoots 33 yards for a touchdown with the point after, would you believe, the Vikings 41 and the Bears 3 in the third. Dick and Merlin? Got to give Jerry Burns and the Vikings a lot of credit. Third down and one, and the handoff to Otis Anderson. He's not going to make it. Ben Smith and Mike Golick stop O.J. Anderson. Watch this. Green-shirted defense attack and penetrate and drive through the ball. Look how far across they are. Otis Anderson forced outside, and all he can find out there are more defenders. And Sean Landetta will be kicking to Anthony Edwards. Great kick by Landetta, and a fair catch called for by Edwards at the 15. But the Philadelphia Eagles defense stymied the Giants on third and one, and will take over, leading the Giants 17 to 13. Welcome back to Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia, where the Eagles are leading the undefeated Giants 17 to 13 with seven minutes to go in the third quarter. The Eagles just stopped the Giants on third and one and start from their 16 yard line. Pete Sherman gets a couple. And Johnny Cooks leads the charge for the Giants. Let's go back and look at that big third down play by the Eagles defense. Simmons and Brown in here just drive things back. That forces Anderson wide, and watch the pursuit. 
and it's Ben Smith, the rookie, coming up right here who makes the play on the outside. But watch how many green jerseys are surrounding him. There must be eight defensive players on top of that stack. That is great hustling, aggressive, attacking defense. Second down and eight on the 18-yard line. Tony is in the block in the pass, caught by Byers. Myers gets a couple of extra yards and has a first down for Philadelphia with Meyer and Guyton knocking the big back out of bounds. Myers comes out of there with great agility. 242 pounds he weighed in at this week. But watch him break to the outside, and once he catches the ball, watch this toe dance down the sideline. Myers got an extra three yards just by being a tightrope walker. He has caught four passes for 81 yards, including one for 54. Heath Sherman in the backfield, first and 10 on the 29. Myers to run. Nowhere to go. And the Giants snuff him out with Pepper Johnson. Leading the way. Several white jerseys in. Saw the Vikings. Big day for Herschel Walker. Green Bay, a wild card contender, as are the New Orleans Saints. Second down and 11. On the draw, Keith Sherman hikes it out to the 33 yard line. Where Steve Diossi makes the stop, it'll be third down and about six. Watch Lawrence Taylor. He'll come aggressively upfield, and it's Byers who's going to take him out right there with an excellent block. Sherman is able to get upfield then and use his speed to get away from Pepper Johnson. They finally get him, but that's a big gain. It'll be third and five. Well, there's JT, LT's son, nine years old, assistant ball boy today. TJ. What did I say? Okay, uh, TJ's a goal. Someday he may do what LT does. Cunningham completes the pass for another first down. Up the middle of the 42-yard line, and it was Calvin Williams, the rookie wide receiver. He was surrounded by Giants, particularly Dave Dewerson. Now, if we were watching a Phillies game, that's probably about an 80 mile an hour fastball coming in there. Boy, that's a steamer coming in. Great catch for the first down. Williams again showing you his maturity. Those rookie wide receivers drafted by Buddy Ryan in this year's draft have paid huge dividends for the Eagles. Barnett caught a touchdown pass today. The other rookie. First and 10 on the 44. And a broken play. And Cunningham gets back maybe a yard. I was standing with the three rookies, Mike Bellamy, the third of those rookies, and I said, all right, which, we, which one of you is Buddy Ryan's son? And they all three pointed the other direction. But they do have a, a very close relationship with Buddy, who's kind of brought them along quickly, much more quickly than you would ordinarily see receivers brought along. And Bellamy, who was held up by injuries early in the year, is also going to be a fine receiver. But can you name another team in the NFL the last few years with two rookie wide receivers starting? Most unusual, and they're getting great productivity. Second down and nine. Here's Byers again, and he fights his way and may have another first down. It's awfully close. Byron Guyton knocked him out of bounds, and Keith Byers, who Rich Kotai told us would be the key to their offense today, has lived up to his billing. This giant defense has made a living this year by not allowing big plays. Coming into today, look at this. Only two runs over 20 yards and only two passes over 30 yards. Well, the Eagles said, we're going to do something about that. And today, they've had a 49-yard pass to Barnett, a 54-yard reception by Byer. So they have shattered some records that the Giants were very proud of. Third down and one on the Eagles 47. Keith Sherman busts into Giant territory and another Eagle first down. 
so many times today and it's been critical to this ball game third and short the Eagles have been able to convert with the running game they did it again right there they have converted nine of 13 third down conversions today David Alexander number 72 gets the block on the nose man right there and just stays with him all across that's Eric Howard trying to drive in and Howard trying to read the combination just a good lockup by Alexander who stayed with him first down on the giant 42 on a bootleg the pass fired and Pepper Johnson rides him down at the 38 yard line gain of only four Giants have to be wary of so many weapons that the Eagles have, and it all begins with number 12. Several of these play-action fakes extremely damaging to Atlanta last week. Watch him hide the football here. Just tuck it in. The slight hesitation. Pepper Johnson not fooled on this play defensively. He's right there to take him down. But I got to tell you, if you go to Byers too many times, go to the well too many times, this giant defense will pick your pocket. Bill Belichick will do it for him. Second down and six. And here's Byers wide open. First down and in deep in Giant territory. A 20-yard gain to Byers. He's caught seven passes for over 100 yards, 113. That will raise the hackles on Bill Parcells' neck for the second time today. Keith Byers all alone in the right flat. And Cunningham finds it as he catches this football. Look, open turf all the way around it. Nobody home. And Byers picks up the first down. On the 18 of the Giants. go right because of the spy. Now he does get by it and gets inside the 15. John Washington and Johnny Cooks on the tackle. So even though the Giants have a guy looking on him, Amira, Cunningham's getting it done today. We measure running backs by their ability to avoid tacklers. Randall Cunningham could play running back in the NFL. And that is the end of the third quarter with the score. The Eagles 17, the Giants 13. And we're back in Veteran Stadium in Philadelphia, where the Eagles are 15 minutes away from sending the New York Giants to their first loss of the year, leading 17 to 13 and threatening. Second and five on the 13-yard line as we start the fourth quarter. Keith Sherman. And that'll bring up third down. And Howard in Washington just shut it down, and we have a penalty marker down. On the play just a moment ago, Cooks right here is watching Cunningham as he drops back and moves out. He'll stay here and spy on Cunningham, but when Cunningham finally decides to run, Cooks just is not quick enough to tackle him. Watch him, just keeping an eye on Randall, staying right in front of him. Finally, Cunningham says, hey, I gotta go upfield. A little juke right there, runs right past Johnny Cooks. Meanwhile, the Giants have been called for a personal foul. Here's Red Cashin. Unnecessary roughness, number 52 on the defense. First down! Pepper Johnson. It'll be first and goal for the Eagles at the six. German. They have lost the yard. Johnny Cooks and Steve Diossi, the two inside backers. This penetration on that last play able to stop the Eagles from being able to get to the outside big possession for the Eagles leading by four a touchdown would force the Giants to get two scores to pull this one out Cunningham nowhere to 
to go is down back at the original line of scrimmage the six Johnny Cooks makes the tackle this is the area of the field where Cunningham is most dangerous and where a running quarterback can help a team the most you have to defend 11 players with Cunningham on the field most teams you can ignore that quarterback Belichick has told his people we have got to keep Cunningham under control Cooks did it on that last play that'll go as a sack for the Giants not only does a touchdown force the Giants into two scores it forces them into two touchdowns so a very big third and six goal on the six coming up for Philly watch Cunningham fires Watch the end of this play. Talk about strange plays and the role they have played in these games off the hands of Barnard and into the hands of Calvin Williams. And the kick by Ruzek is good, and it's 24 to 13. And we'll return to Veteran Stadium after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. The Philadelphia Eagles 24 points is the most points given up by the Giants this year and it was Calvin Williams on the deflection another one of many strange plays we have seen in this rivalry so the two rookie wide receivers have each caught a touchdown pass today Roger Ruzek will kick off Megan and Hampton are back in for the Giants and this is headed towards Hampton out of bounds and Phil Simms goes to work let's go back and take a peek at that last play you'll feel like you're looking at it from the standpoint of Cunningham Randall is going to drop back he's got Williams coming across in motion to his right he'll drive out and come across the zone he's not going to be the receiver Barnett coming from the right side the ball batted out of his hands and right into the waiting arms of Calvin Williams celebration time Crowd into this game now with the Eagles leading by 11. Sims on first down from the 31. And the pass is incomplete, intended for Hampton. At Rich Stadium, Buffalo a strong team, as is Philadelphia. And the Bills leading Miami by one game coming into this game. Well, the Bills proud to build themselves as a team that could match up nose-to-nose -nose in the NFC East. There aren't a lot of teams in the AFC who can say that. Bruce Smith, the great pass rusher. Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, they've got great balance. Second down and 10. Sims has it batted away, and it's intercepted. And the Eagles will score again. Byron Evans. Several flags have been thrown. The Eagles will be penalized for exuberant celebration, and I don't think the Giants appreciated it much. The Giants will get a personal foul out of that as one of the Giants pushed one of the officials down there. Early in this game, the Giants got a pair of turnovers. They turned one of them into a touchdown. But Buddy Ryan's defense focuses all of its pressure on the quarterback. And their idea is simply, we're going to force our own turnovers. They did it there for the touchdown.
what you're hearing from those giants right there talking to the official. They're saying there was taunting going on there. We were being taunted. But you don't push officials even if you're being taunted. The Giants were called for an exuberant celebration earlier. Mark Ingram, when he caught the touchdown pass to give the Giants a 7-0 lead. But Byron Evans rumbles in for the touchdown on the interception, his first NFL touchdown. The pressure coming with the blitz. The ball is batted right there, and Evans alertly just grabs it and packs it in. That's Clyde Simmons, number 96, in from his end position to bat that ball. Well, here's what... Here's what they get the five-yarder for. That's the first part. But then what happened after that draws the penalty for the Giants. And we haven't heard the call, but I'm assuming that's what it was because one of the Giants players pushed one of the officials. It's right there at the back, I think, of the end zone between Riesenberg and Bavaro that the pushing was going on. We have offensive pass interference. That penalty is declined. We have unnecessary roughness, number 89, after the score. That penalty is declined. We have another unnecessary roughness, number 89, and a disqualification. There's 15 yards on the kickoff. Mark Bavaro has been tossed out of the game. will be marked off at the kickoff. You saw Bavaro in the corner of your picture, and he has been thrown out. Roger Ruzek's kick is good, and it's 31 to 13 in favor of the Eagles. And the route is on. Story of this game, and who expected the Eagles to be romping over the Giants? Byron Evans, the middle linebacker, with his first NFL touchdown on a return of an interception. Randall Cunningham, two scores to his rookie wide receivers and scored himself. Mark Bavaro has just been ejected from the game with two personal fouls. And you can't help your team when you're on the sideline. Bill Parcells want, didn't want his team to become too macho against what Philadelphia has a reputation of doing. They're very aggressive, even after the whistle blows. They are, and, and even if you have a reason, you cannot touch those officials, and I'm sure that that's... We saw the official go down. We saw him reach for his pocket. That was Dave Hamilton, the official that was pushed on that play. Buddy's team is the one that usually gets those kind of penalties. He's supposed to be coaching a bunch of wild men out there on the field, but the Giants have lost their cool a couple of times today and made a couple of uncharacteristic defensive mistakes. Byers open a couple of times in the flat. Several other people not where they were supposed to be. So the Giants likely headed for their first setback, but really the Philadelphia Eagles strengthening their wild card position because with the Redskins losing to Dallas on Thanksgiving Day, Philadelphia now would have a home field advantage in one of the wild card matchups. Now, three wild card teams will make the NFL playoffs this year, and with Minnesota beating Chicago handily, that really strengthens the Vikings, who will be five and six after today's game. The sense looking across at that Giants sideline that this Eagle rush has taken some of the confidence, some of the air out of those Giants. But Cunningham, so much the difference. We talked about it coming into this ball game. He has the hot hand, and he has continued to play that hand today. They're going to kick off from the 45, so it's a 10-yard mark-off for the kickoff following Bavaro's penalties. Megan and Hampton are back for the Giants. A lot of time remaining, but the Eagles... Leading 31-13, and Rodney Hampton. Not easy to bring him down. And he's tackled at the 23 by Kenny Jackson. Once again, let's take a look at the wild card picture in the NFC. Philadelphia could be headed for 7-4, but Minnesota is winning. 
And New Orleans is winning. Dallas won on Thanksgiving Day. Now, let's take a look at the records of their opponents. Now, Minnesota has the easiest trail from this point on. Green Bay at 25 and 38 has the easiest, I should say, in Minnesota at 45 and 16 has the toughest schedule from here on in. Most difficult, without question. Sims on first down gets hit. Whoa. And nearly intercepted by Ben Smith. This is the kind of situation that plays right into an aggressive defense's hands. You're down. They know you've got to throw the ball. You turn it loose and come. Watch Sims under heat. He didn't get a hand laid on him all week last week. Well, these Eagles promised to get to him today. They kept their promise, and they do it again right there. Seth Joyner and Mike Golick nailed Sims. Second and ten. Inside handoff to Megan. Great running by Dave Meggett. Chased by Ben Smith. And knocked out of bounds and a penalty marker thrown as well. Face mask. Following a 51-yard run by Meggett. There was a face mask right at the end of the run. And they'll get another five yards as a result of that. But Meggett so very, very quick and so dangerous. That's the call after Meggett with his longest career run, 51 yards on this play. Sims just hands off out of that shotgun formation, and everyone had blown up field looking for the quarterback. And there's Meggett all by himself streaking down the sideline. Watch the hand of the mask right here. You'll see it coming in, and it's right there. There's the shot. He turns him around. He may have been called for a 15-yarder. That's Ben Smith, the rookie, who finally got there to make the stop. First and goal for the Giants on the nine. A little more than 12 minutes remaining. We're early here in the fourth quarter. Sims has Hampton. Ooh, and Hampton is crunched by several Eagles, Joyner and Ben Smith. Smith wanting to apologize for the, that face mask call came right back with a vicious hit. I think the toughest position to play in the NFL physically on defense, cornerback. And the toughest cornerback position in the NFL is here, Buddy Ryan's defense. Watch number 26, rookie Ben Smith coming up with a crunching hit, hit to help Seth Joyner on Hampton on the outside. Second and goal, the ball at the five. And the pass is incomplete. Ingram was deep, and now Ingram and Ben Smith. And Bill Parcells wants him to cool it. This is a big drive and an opportunity for the Giants to climb right back into this game. But they need the touchdown right now. It'll be third and five. The ball is at the eight-yard line. Bigger the Giants have two downs to try to go for the touchdown, trailing 31 to 13. Not much reason not to go for it at this point. The field goal really doesn't help you. The Eagles waiting until the Giants have substituted to send their own substitutions onto the field. And, and the now, Giants have called a timeout. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Honda, maker of fine quality automobiles. Test drive a Honda at your local dealer today. AT&T, the right choice. And by America's favorite light beer, Miller Lite, the sole sponsor of the NFL Player of the Year Award. A Philadelphia favorite, Chiefs. <laughs> well, that's about the last thing on these Giants' mind right now. Touchdown on their minds, and they got a critical third and five. Anderson and Carthon, the running back. Sims, pass, incomplete. 
It was intended. Andre Waters tipped it. It was intended for Mark Ingram. And that'll bring up fourth down, and the Giants bring in Bob Marosco, their third tight end. Marosco is in the game. but he has taken great heat. And will that be against the Eagles or the Giants? They're saying it's against the Giants. They pick up the flag, so the Eagles take over on down. A loss of seven, and it was Jesse Small. their feet at Veterans Stadium in Philadelphia the Philadelphia Eagles ahead of the Giants 31 to 13 Giants could be headed for their first loss of this season time remaining 11 16 and the Eagles defense stopped the Giants on third and one and just now on fourth down on the eight yard line and a brilliant game for Randall Cunningham as he starts from his 15 yard line Cunningham downfield to Byers. And Collins had it and then dropped it. It'll go as an incomplete pass. Let's go back to that last play and get a look at the tremendous pressure being applied to Phil Sims. Seth Joyner is the man that's going to come around from the back, but they break it down right here, and Sims has nowhere to step. He can't step forward as they come rushing up the middle, and Joyner just buries him for the backside, along with help from Schmall, and they end up taking their first sack of the day and killing the scoring opportunity for the Giants. Second down and 10 for the Eagles. Still a lot of time left, but Philadelphia dominating the game. Cunningham escapes the sack, and out runs Pepper Johnson for a first down. What a brilliant game today by Randall Cunningham as he picks up 13. Giants took the lead in the first quarter. Mark Ingram's touchdown catch from Sims. And then Fred Barnett on a 49-yard reception tied the score in the first quarter. Randall Cunningham ran for a yard, and the Eagles led 14-7. And then Mark Bavaro on a four-yard touchdown pass. The mixed conversion by Barr. The Eagles led, stretched their lead on Ruzek's field goal, and on a deflection, Calvin Williams caught a touchdown pass before Byron Evans on an interception return for a touchdown. Keith Sherman on first and ten. Tackle made by John Washington. Big lead by Minnesota. And Green Bay. Atlanta leading New Orleans. Just under 10 minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Mark Bavaro tossed out of the game after Evans scored on the interception. Personal foul and he knocked down an official. He was thrown out, Bavaro. Second down and seven. Pass intended for Keith Jackson. Covered by Gary Reasons. Well, how do you get to the Giants? How do you crack their winning streak? You've obviously got to do something that they have, people have found it difficult to do. You have to be able to run the football against them. At least that's what the Eagles have done today. 143 yards today. The season average for the Giants, 77.2 yards. So they're almost double that. And that has allowed them to click in the passing game. Giants set out to throw more today, and they did. But the Eagles' defense has been superlative. Third down and eight. 
Taylor chasing Cunningham. Larry McGrew finally makes the stop as Cunningham is a couple of yards shy of the first down. Brings up fourth down and the Eagles will kick. Lawrence Taylor had three big sacks in that first game against the Eagles right after he came back in, signed his contract. He kind of disappeared for a while shortly after that. Has come back to playing more team defense. But you could see on that last play how Cunningham able to run away from LT. Age has taken some of the great speed from that linebacker. Jeff Eagles will kick and Dave Meggett goes back for the Giants. Great kick by Fiegel. Terrific. Sending Meggett back inside his tent. And down just short of the 20 by Sammy Lilly. Al Roberts special teams doing a brilliant job for the Eagles today. A 55-yard kick that time. I want to remind you, next Saturday, college football today begins at noon Eastern with Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa. Doubleheader action. Texas A&M and Texas at noon. Question that Texas looking forward to their opportunity to play the Cotton Bowl against Miami. And Auburn and Alabama and then the Heisman Trophy Award. Everyone waiting to see who will win the Heisman next Saturday at 6.30 Eastern Time right here on CBS. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. Out of the shotgun is Sims. Four wide receivers for the Giants. Make it out of the backfield. Picks up about seven. Andre Waters, the strong safety on the stop. Giants operating out of their hurry-up offense now with 8.15 to go in the fourth quarter. The Eagles will be defend with some zone defenses in this kind of situation, which are unusual Make it for them. With a penalty marker down. He may have a holding penalty against the Giants. That's the preliminary call. Bob Cratch on Reggie White. Holding. Number 61 on the offense. Still second down. That's Cratch, 61. The Eagles move Reggie White around. They've got him right in on the guard. Bob Cratch here. Watch him. He just blows inside. And having beaten Cratch off the ball, Cratch just continues to hook. Well, I got to tell you. Second look. I don't know that that was a good call. Look at, I don't think here. that was a good call. Second down and 13. Here comes pressure on Sims, and down he goes. Seth Joyner. Second sack of the game. Small and Joyner. Two linebackers for Philadelphia. That gives the Eagles 31 sacks on the year. Right-hand side, Seth Joyner just attacking over the top of Meggett. Megat, not a great blocker, and the Eagles said when he was in there, they wanted to blitz him. Not only keeps him in, but gives them a chance to get at the quarterback. Third down and 21, following the eight-yard loss on the sack. In the end zone, Sims in trouble. Fires it away, incomplete. And a penalty marker down. They're going to call him for illegal grounding. He's just trying to avoid the sack. And if he's in the end zone, that's going to cost him a safety. Whoa, wait a minute. Jerome Brown upset. What's it's going on? Grounding, number 11, loss of down, fourth down. I think Brown wanted a safety out of it. It's going to be a loss of down and fourth down on the intentional grounding call. You see Seth Joyner blitzing from this side. This is the bump on Megat, but they get the pressure on Sims and force him out. Now let's see if we can see where Sims is. Oh, he's up into the field of play. All right, had he been in the end zone there, then they would have had the safety, but he managed to get across the goal line. Sean Landetta doesn't have much room to kick from the back of the end zone. Anthony Edwards at midfield, returning for Philadelphia. 
And apparently he called for the fair catch at midfield. The Philadelphia Eagles here at Veterans Stadium have given the New York Giants a sound thrashing this afternoon. And the Giants headed for their first loss of the year, and the Eagles on their way to their fifth consecutive victory. First time ever under Buddy Ryan. And after struggling early, the Eagles have come on big, and the Giants facing the onslaught by the Eagles today now can actually look ahead to the 49ers next Monday night. First down, Eagles. Keith Sherman using up the time. John Washington, first man to get to him. Cunningham has utilized his wide receivers extremely well today, but coming into this ball game, neither the Giants nor the Eagles throwing a lot of passes to their wide receivers. But today, Cunningham has used his wide receivers extremely well. And Sims, early in this ball game, able to get his passes to the wide receivers for some big plays. Cunningham has gained 66 yards and scored a touchdown. Sherman has gained 49 yards on the ground today. Second down and six. Again, it's Sherman. It'll be third down, shy of a first down by about two. Greg Jackson on the stop. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League, and the CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of CBS, the Philadelphia Eagles, and the National Football League is prohibited. Third down and two on the Giant 41. Play fake on a bootleg, and the pass is caught by Byers. And another first down. 15 yards, and what a game. Cunningham has played, of course, but Byers, Byers the key man. has been the difference, Dick. Time and time again today, when they need the big play, they go to number 41, left side of your screen, just swinging across the middle, runs right into the official, and still gets there to catch the football. Myron Guyton there as a safety, but not until he picked it up big. Cunningham will take a hit here. Not much. And Byers now with eight catches for 128 yards today. Keith Sherman on first down. And stopped by Everson Wall. Using the clock, four and a half minutes to go. Well, there hasn't been many haven't been many opportunities for long faces on the Giants sideline this year. Not only have they not lost any games, they've rarely been behind in a ball game. Well, they not only are behind today, they have been outplayed by Buddy Ryan's Eagles. On both sides of the ball. Absolutely. Second down and one. Sherman stopped by Howard. That'll bring up third down. A good opportunity, Dick, to congratulate that offensive line for the Eagles. When you can run the ball as effectively as they have done today, they are doing their job well. David Alexander has played well on the center. Those two guards, Ron Salt and Shad, both playing injured. We mentioned Shad with a shoulder, Salt with an ankle. And out of the tackle, Reggie Singletary and Ron Heller. Heller still fighting with that left tackle position. He said, hey, I sometimes line up on the wrong side in the huddle. I'm just not used to it. But he has done a good job today as well. They all have. That was supposed to be a weak point for Philadelphia. Sherman has stopped again, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, despite the fact the Giants won the first meeting between the two teams on the opening week of the season, the Eagles had won the four previous games and after today the Giants in the last three years will drop down to one in five against the Eagles against 
tremendous success against Dallas, Washington, and Phoenix. That's an interesting graphic, isn't it? To be so successful against several teams, and yet this is a matter of matchup. And you're matching up with that man and his team, Buddy Ryan. Fourth and three, the Eagles will turn the ball over to the Giants on downs. Ooh. Ron Heller, very angry, going after one of the giant linemen on that last play. Uh, Steve Diossi. When this game started, we talked about your conversation with Lawrence Taylor on the field. He told you this game meant more than even the 49er game. And it wasn't because this game was the first one coming up, was it? These teams do not like each other. And they play so often that they are so experienced. They, it's a very personal rivalry. And I asked Lawrence, I said, Lawrence, if somebody told you you've only got one choice, I mean, you can win this game or you can win next week in San Francisco, which one do you take? He didn't bat an eyelash. He said, we win this game. We don't like these guys. I think that was evident today. Well, the Eagles like this guy, Mando Cunningham. He's had a special afternoon. First down on the 20 for the Giants. Sims going up top to Baker. Knocked away incomplete. And Eric Allen. With tremendous coverage on Stephen Baker. Let's take a look at what the Eagles have the rest of the way. They'll be seven and four after this game. We've talked about the big one in Buffalo next week, which you'll see at CBS. Miami on the road the week after. Green Bay, Dallas, and Phoenix. Not easy games. Dallas is coming on. The Packers are tough anywhere. And Phoenix on the road the last week. So it is not going to be an easy road for the Eagles. Not easy at all for them. Second down and ten. Swing it out to Megan. The blockers in front of him. Dave Megan going. And Hopkins knocks him out of bounds. Oh, and Megan thinking he had been grabbed by the face mask or fouled on that play comes right up after Wes Hopkins. 28 yard gain for Megan, who had a 51 yard scamper earlier here in the second half. The Giants will come out and huddle. Watch this, the end of this play right here, and that's why he's angry. The officials missed the face mask on Hopkins, and then you get a little kick extra, and Megan comes right up, and he's willing to go after Hopkins, but the official steps in between. Megan had good cause there. He did. He did. First and 10 at the 48, and the pass incomplete. Out of bounds was Baker. Eric Allen covering him again. Only one foot down for Stephen Baker. 2.06 remaining in the fourth quarter. Watch the feet. One foot down, the second one clearly out of bounds. Good call by the official. And Dick, Eagle fans are going to look back to the beginning of this season, that very close seven-point loss to the Giants, and then the upset by the Cardinals here, and they're going to say, what if? What if we had won that opening game? I think they were still suffering from that when they went to sleep the next week against Phoenix. Could be a much different season for the Eagles. All right. What a change of complexion here. Sims pass. Troy Kyles. And that'll bring up the two-minute warning. And the two-minute warning is here, and we'll be back to Veterans Stadium with the Eagles romping over the Giants. Well, tonight on CBS, you witnessed a murder, but if you can tell the police you and your whole family will be killed, what do you do? Think about it. Well, 60 Minutes did, and that's their lead story tonight. That's followed by Murder, She Wrote, and then it's Motown 30, What's Going On? All coming up tonight on CBS. What's going on? Well, Lawrence <laughs> Taylor and the Giants wondering at this point. Megan. Bounces off his own lineman and runs for the first down and is out of bounds on the Eagle 35. I want to remind you, coming up, the NFL Today, the post-game show, will bring you up to date on all the scores and highlights from today. Bears came in with one loss. Vikings putting it to them, and the Giants coming into this game undefeated. And the Eagles stomping all over them here in Philadelphia. Now, there will be people who will say that the Giants look past this game toward the game in San Francisco. I don't think so. I don't think so. They know each other too well. They know each other too well. They just got whipped today. 
Giants with a first down on the Eagles 35. Pass intended for Baker and is overthrown. Of course, the 49ers will be the only undefeated team remaining in the NFL, and they have a game against the Rams coming up. Well, <laughs> are you going to ask me about that one? Rams have suffered through a very dismal season without question, and it particularly on defense. But I have to tell you, stranger things have happened, and in an emotional rivalry, much like this one, they play three times a year. Who else should I ask about a Ram 49 a rivalry than you? I don't know. <laughs> a little contemplation by Eric Moore, or Eric Dorsey on the sideline. Not Eric Moore. Second down and 10. Sims has Lionel Manuel and a first down. Giants threatened. That was a 19-yard game. Clock is running. Thirty-one to thirteen, the score. The Eagles led at halftime by one point, fourteen to thirteen. And the pass is intercepted by Eric Allen. And that's his first interception of the year after leading the NFC last season with eight. And for Phil Sims, he now has thrown four interceptions all year. Three by the Philadelphia Eagles. Hopkins in the opening game. Byron Evans, who returned one for a touchdown in the second half, and now Eric Allen. Well, certainly the one that was batted in the air should not be credited as Sims, although it will be historically. But on this particular play, he tries to thread the needle to a receiver that is well covered. And again, credit the pressure, the heat. And that is what caused this. That's what caused the interception here. Sims has to get rid of this football. He feels it coming. Hopkins coming. Joyner coming right there. And they sandwiched him just as he threw that football. And to give us the Heat Sherman with a little over a minute remaining. So the Giants, who capitalized on an Eagle turnover early in the game to take a 7-0 lead when the Eagles turned it over twice. But in the final analysis, the Giants turned it over two more times. Dick, we have talked about the Eagles on offense, but Buddy Ryan did one thing when he came here to Philadelphia. He installed one of the toughest defenses in the NFL, one of the most complicated. They've learned how to play it, and boy, did they play it here against the Giants today. Second down and eight. Keith Sherman. Oh, he's still running. Keith Sherman picks up the first down to pour assault on the wound as the Eagles have run on the Giants to a fairly well, and that'll do it. The streak is over. streak that started against the Eagles is ended by the Eagles. Last regular season loss was to the Eagles last December 3rd. And Philadelphia ends the giant winning streak at 13. The Eagles stomp over the Giants 31 to 13. Randall Cunningham with two touchdown passes to his two rookie wide receivers. He scored one himself. And as a result, the Giants, who had a chance to wrap up the division with a win, do not do it. And their lead over Philadelphia is three games. Impressive performance by the Eagles. And I'm sure Philadelphia fans are smiling. Buddy said all week, he said, hey, they won the last one, but we won the four before that. We're going to whip them again. And they did exactly that. But without Cunningham's mobility without his running ability and his passing today he threw the ball extremely well we said coming into the game he's been hot as a quarterback for the last four weeks well he was toasty here today the eagles have beaten the giants five out of six times and avenge the opening game setback so the final score the eagles 31 the giants 13 and our coverage will continue with the NFL Today post-game show Greg and Terry will bring you up to date on all of today's scores and highlights 
and playoff updates. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Woo! 